Okay, we're going to get going uh, and people can, 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 can uh, continue to filter in. Um, I want to introduce myself, stop and introduce myself. My name is Tanya Groves and I'm this, uh, the Director of Educational Programs for the Open Education Network. Um, and I also want to welcome my colleague, uh, Sarah Cohen, the Senior Managing Director who I see has joined us and thank Craig Sandler, the Communications Specialist uh, who's helping me navigate the technology, which I need help with. Uh, so uh, I welcome you to this certificate uh, in OER librarianship information session. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and get started and, and people can continue to, to file in. Um, I want to acknowledge that this is a, a pandemic and many of us are working from home. And uh, I have a noisy dog, a college uh, freshman who just decided to drop in unannounced right now. <laughs> so if there's noise, you know, it, it's the pandemic and we're all just doing the best we can. So go ahead um, and, and put your comments and questions in the chat. Um, and, you know, you can feel free to do that all along, but we'll for sure have time for questions at the end. So we're going to get going. So, sorry, I need to minimize a few things here. Um, let's see. Talking about technology. Um, okay, so uh, today we're going to talk about the program. I'm going to provide um, an overview and with a description, an overview of components, the objectives, um, the costs. Uh, we're going to hear from our lovely, a couple of our instructors. They're all hopefully going to be able to uh, introduce themselves. If not, I'll introduce um, them for you. Uh, we will hear some participant testimonials, some current participants in the the uh, CERT right now, the certificate program right now, and some um, alumni who've already graduated and, and can reflect on their experience for you. And then we'll have some time for questions at the end. So that's gonna be uh, what we're gonna do today. And um, Craig, feel free to interrupt me if there's um, chat that I should be attending to or a question um, that's pertinent at that time. So I just want to provide you a description. Um, so one of my jobs, uh, one of the components of my job that I love the most really is uh, to, to manage this certificate in OER librarianship. So I get um, really the wonderful opportunity to get to know uh, the curriculum, which is outstanding, and the instructors, which are awesome. Um, and so here's our description. So the Certificate in OER Librarianship is a professional development program that will create effective open education program leaders who wanna be stewards and advocates for open educational resources. And I love the fact that we include both the word stewards, um, managing what you have and what you will have, but also advocates. And I think that's very true um, and reflective of not only the curriculum in the program, but the discussions I see going on, uh, the video content, and, and we'll get to some more of those components of the certificate. So that's, that's kind of what we're about. Um, just a little bit of context that this was originally funded by a Laura Bush 21st Century Librarian Program grant from IMLS in 2018. So that was the first cohort. Um, and it is for librarians only. I'm really excited that we are entering our third cohort. Um, it does offer formal training, a community of peers across the nation and in Canada um, and, uh, and outside of the United States, although our curriculum definitely has um, uh, an American uh, context. Um, but we, are, we definitely allow people um, from other countries and we've had some inquiries actually from Australia. So that'll be a really interesting perspective to welcome. Um, and expert mentors, um, and you'll see us use the words mentor and inter instructor interchangeably. Um, we seek to build sustainable, collaborative and effective open ed programs. Um, and I think this next one, this next point um, speaks to a really important question, how much time? Um, and we've uh, estimated based on reading rates that for the online course, it's about four to seven hours per week. After the week, uh, eight week online course, I think the um, estimated time goes down a little to probably three to four hours a week. So let's go ahead and look at those program components that I've already kind of shared a little bit of. 
Um, so you can anticipate uh, an eight week online course that begins in February of 2021. It's usually late February. Um, and then after that course, there are five months of monthly synchronous cohort meetings um, running through September of 2021. And, and we're always um, asking for feedback and listening to what the participants say. Um, and I think this year, maybe even more than others, although the instructors can speak to that better than I can, but um, we heard that people wanted uh, not just to meet with their cohorts, but they wanted as in a whole cohort, the whole whole program to meet. And so we allowed that opportunity um, a few times through videos or whatever, um, opportunities for everyone to meet. So um, just know we're iterating on this and we change it a little bit, we tweak it um, every time to make it better and based upon um, uh, participant uh, feedback and opinions and, and just you know their experience in the program. The culminating project is an action plan uh, that's customized to meet your institutional needs. So we have a template, we have fantastic examples, and one of them is from Nora Rackley, who's actually uh, going to provide her testimonial a little later. Um, but we're definitely flexible in that we know during the pandemic, things are different, <laughs> things are strange, budgets are cut. Um, and so it was a great opportunity for us this year. Um, and uh, to be flexible and I'll say that the instructors just couldn't have been more generous with their time or ability to talk through how we might mold this uh, to meet pandemic needs. Our program learning objectives um, are to gain fluency in defining open ed. Um, so can you do a little elevator speech? Um, you know, how do you promote it and define it very quickly so that it's second nature? Uh, identify local collaborations and alliances, um, designing and building sustainable programming. We want to develop strategies for measuring and articulating the impact of open education. And we want you to connect and collaborate with librarians dedicated to developing OER initiatives across the country. You know, reading through past surveys, um, that's one of the things that I heard the most was that I got to know somebody, you know, in my state who is doing the same thing and I didn't even know he was doing that. Um, and so this connectivity, um, I think, is important. So our program costs. Um, We've worked hard to keep our program costs low. Um, and so OEN members, um, Open Educational Network members pay $650 for the entire um, eight month program. Uh, if you're affiliated through an OEN system or consortia, it's $850 and non-members, it's $1050. Um, but I'd like to talk about the financial assistance that we have available. Uh, so librarians who need financial assistance will be asked to submit a letter of support from a colleague or supervisor. If you've already logged on to the application, you'll know that. Um, and I'll just say last year we were able to pretty comprehensively meet the needs uh, that came up. Also, we're really excited uh, to tell you about the full scholarships that we have available this year for librarians of color. So we know that there's a shortage of librarians of color in open ed. And in order to um, change that, we're trying to offer some full scholarships to librarians who are black, indigenous, or people of color. So these librarians seeking a full scholarship will be asked to submit a letter of support from a colleague or supervisor. Um, and so I'm really excited about that opportunity and I hope we get interest in that. Um, and these are not comprehensive benefits by any means, uh, but here are some benefits that I've seen in surveys that I've heard um, some participants share and that I've seen firsthand. Um, so the fact that you get connections with librarians all over the nation and maybe outside of the nation. Um, you formulate a very robust, comprehensive action plan that provides um, a really good template for you for next steps. And it's a way to share with supervisors, with administration, um, with your uh, fellow librarians, you know, here's what I would like to see for our open ed movement and, and, and all the pieces are built in down to even the, power, uh, the PowerPoints that you might share uh, with different audiences. 
You get tons of examples, best practices, and resources all in a course shell that's available to you. Um, you earn a certificate at the end, um, and just this year, we're actually creating an alumni Google group after graduation, so you can connect you can continue to connect with people not only from your cohort, but from previous cohorts. So I'm excited to see what kind of traction uh, that gets. Um, so before I get to the instructor uh, page, I'm just curious if there's any questions. Um, Tony, we do have one question in Q&A right now. Uh, what is the acceptance rate? Do we have that number? Um, we don't. I don't have a percentage, but I'll, I'll just tell you that um, I think we had 70 applicants uh, last year um, and we were able to accept 56. That was our, 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 um, our max. And we've upped our max this year because we've added two additional instructors. So uh, our max capacity is 64. Um, and so I think it's more about our capacity, but I would say that our acceptance rate is pretty high. So uh, we really want this to be an open and welcoming program. Um, and so, yeah, so um, we're excited also about just the financial aid and the full scholarship available this year too. Anything else, Craig? Uh, looks like nothing else at the moment. Okay, thanks. Um, here are wonderful instructors. It's a privilege to work alongside them. Poor Will, since he's first, so I'm going to make him introduce himself. And I say poor Will because this is his fifth webinar of the week, <laughs> and that's a lot. Um, so uh, instructors, if you're here and able, I would love you to just go ahead and introduce yourself from left to right. So Will first, Michael last. And I'll just say that um, Wade and Michael are joining us newly. Uh, they're new instructors this year, so I'm super excited to welcome them. So go ahead, Will, and if somehow you can't, you know, introduce yourself, then I'll do it for you. And I, I don't think um, Lily is here, so I'll go ahead and introduce her. Thanks, Tanya, and hey, everybody. We really appreciate you being here today. So I'm, I'm Will. I'm one of the instructors slash mentors, and I love that we sort of use those words synonymously because they're both things we take really seriously and really enjoy doing. Um, so. I guess in the rest of my life, I'm the director of the Copyright and Digital Scholarship Center, which means I'm a lawyer who's also a librarian, which means I'm really fun at parties. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited to be part of the cohort. Uh, so I'll turn it over to Cheryl now. Hi, everybody. I'm Cheryl Coolier. I'm the Open Education Librarian at the University of Arizona in Tucson. And this will be my third year as an instructor slash mentor. Hi everyone, my name is Mandy Goodset, and um, I am the Open Educational Resources and Copyright Advisor, as well as the Performing Arts and Humanities Librarian at Cleveland State University. Um, and like Will and Cheryl, this will be my third year um, participating as an instructor, and um, I highly recommend it. It's a really fun program to be a part of. Hi everyone, my name is Jeannie Hoover and I'm Head of Scholarly Communication at East Carolina University. Um, and this will be going into my second year participating. And I'm really excited to um, meet the next uh, group of cohorts and uh, keep engaged with the current ones. Hi everyone, aloha. Um, uh, my name is Wade Oshiro. I am uh, the Learning Commons and uh, Library Coordinator at Leeward Community College. Uh, we are part of the University of Hawaii system, and I've been involved with uh, OER on my campus as well as uh, throughout our system, uh, leading our initiative for about five years. Um, I'm very excited to be a part of this group. I hope to um, be able to share as much as I learn, and I look forward to working with some of uh, our community college um, participants, so thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Elaine Thornton. I am the Open Education and Distance Learning Librarian at the University of Arkansas. So I've just finished my first year as an instructor and it's been a fabulous experience getting to know all of the librarians in my cohort and uh, my co-instructors. So welcome and thanks for coming. And I'll introduce Lily Todoranova, who's also just joined uh, this year with Elaine from Rutgers University. 
And hello, my name is Michael Whitchurch. I, I'm at Brigham Young University. I am the OER and media literacy librarian that just changed about a month ago. I'm really excited to be with you. This is such a great opportunity to learn and I look forward to seeing what you are all capable of in becoming the experts that we then turn to for OER information. Thank you, Michael, and welcome, Wade and Michael. We're excited to have you on board. Um, next. Next, we'll have Cheryl talk a little bit uh, about her experience as an instructor. She started this program. She's one of the first instructors, um, and we probably, unfortunately, at times, uh, rely very heavily on her excellent <laughs> editing skills, among many others. Uh, so Cheryl, do you want to share with us for just a little bit? Sure. So I, I think um, the need for this program arose out of the fact that a lot of us found ourselves suddenly in charge of OER programs or textbook affordability programs with no preparation or training. And it's really been a self-directed journey for a lot of us. Um, and you can piece together the training, going to different webinars and and participating in different things. But what's great about the certificate is that one, it's paced and it's all in one place. And as a former newspaper person, I appreciate deadlines. <laughs> I don't do well unless I have a deadline for completing a project. So, um, so I appreciate those aspects. Um, there's also, you know, the support of your cohort group. And so getting to meet other people and we tend to group the cohorts by similar institution type. And so, you know, folks from community colleges often share similar challenges or folks at private universities. And so we now have Michael um, to be able to advise um, people at private universities about, you know, and be able to bounce ideas and this worked for me, this didn't work for me. It's, it's a great um, community um, and a way to find people who are learning and going through similar challenges as you are. Uh, and then also just, I mean, the, my fabulous co-instructors and mentors are a great resource. And uh, so, so learning from the instructors is a great piece of the certificate as well. Thank you very much, Cheryl. Uh, Will, can you share a little bit with us about your journey in this program? Sure, I'd be happy to. And, and gosh, Cheryl, it's hard to believe it's been three years since we were sitting in that little sort of room writing on the whiteboard and planning it all out. I, I think Cheryl did a really nice job of introducing the program as, as growing out of this sense of um, the value of connecting to the community, which is really central to this work, in a way that's structured and, and sort of deliberately designed that, that so many folks in OER just sort of put it together with bailing wire and duct tape and it kind of comes together okay. But I think that value of, of sort of integrating into the community in a thoughtful and deliberate way has been really central. The other thing that's been really exciting to me is, is the focus explicitly on librarianship. A lot of what we do in OER sort of makes an assumption about librarianship or, or has those values in some way, but really saying explicitly that this is thinking about OER in that context. I think that's made it really successful and really powerful in a lot of ways. I was thinking as I was preparing for this talk, I'm already seeing so many people from the first year and frankly from the second year as well, doing amazing work on their campuses, launching nationally recognized projects and taking leadership roles in the community. Every day I see somebody and I say, wow, that's, that's an awesome project or I'm glad they're in charge of that. And then, then I go, oh yeah, we were all sitting around at ACRL last year, just you know, sharing coffee and, and talking about stuff. So I think this is a great way to, to connect to a community that's, that's really welcoming and, and excited to have new people in a way that's structured and, and sort of brings it all together. Um, and it's also a great way to meet some of the best friends and trusted peers you'll have that, that right, you'll, you sit across from somebody this year and, and learn together and then next year you'll be on a committee together or you'll be thinking up a crazy project that's gonna change the world together. I've, it's been really, really exciting to see that start to happen and, and I know it's gonna keep happening with the great folks that are involved. Thank you so much, Will. Um, and you mentioned something that just kind of triggered uh, the fact that the first uh, 
two cohorts, cohorts I think, actually did meet in person. Um, and because of the pandemic, we had to pivot to online. Um, and the instructors got together and created some really amazing videos um, that I learned from every time I watch uh, a component video or a longer uh, webinar because we did some of those. Uh, Will was part of a fabulous one on open pedagogy. Um, but, uh, you know, I think we all sort of desire to get back together face to face. Unfortunately, that won't be a part of this next cohort, the 2021 cohort, because we just can't foresee when exactly we're going to have a um, a vaccine and when traveling will be safe again. Um, but just know that that connectedness is something we desire and we intentionally look for ways to foster it, um, even if it's not face to face necessarily. Um, so now I'd love to transition to um, some participant testimonials, some people who are currently in the program and who have been in the program um, previously. And then at the end, you might want to ask them specifically some questions. So up first, we have um, Tim Gladson from National University. So Tim, would you please share with us? Hi, yeah. So um, I work at National University as a uh, instructional design librarian and, and we're a, a private nonprofit. So it was kind of cool to be in a cohort with other uh, librarians from um, other uh, private universities. Uh, that kind of made it a little bit more um, personalized experience uh, being in that cohort with librarians from similar institutions. Um, and so, yeah, my boss and I started promoting OER at our university uh, almost three years ago. Um, so I wasn't completely new to OER, um, but our program wasn't very fully developed yet either. So we were kind of in a, a medium stage of develop, development. And so for me, one of the, um, the benefits of the OER certificate program was re-energizing our efforts and kind of refocusing uh, our, our efforts. Um, we had tried a lot of different things and I wasn't really sure what was going to get traction um, in any large scale change initiative like OER, it takes a lot longer to get up and running than you initially hope that it's going to take. Um, so I, th I think for me, the, the, the greatest benefit of the program was thinking through our local strategic uh, landscape. And through the program, uh, we did a SWOT analysis, uh, we did a needs analysis, um, we analyzed the university's strategic plan and how OER could fit into it, um, and practice pitches to various stakeholders. Um, and then, of course, the, the action plan with your concrete uh, SMART goals. Um, and I'd thought about a lot of these things informally over the last two or three years. Uh, but I hadn't done it systematically and, and without that, you know, support um, from experts in the field of guiding through that process. Um, so th that was what was really most useful to, to me. Um, and of course, it was cool being surrounded by several other OER librarians because uh, I'm, I'm the only one at my institution. So being in that community with others uh, was really cool. Um, and of course, uh, our mentor was awesome. Cheryl uh, was the mentor for the uh, cohort I was in, um, and she, you know, provided feedback all along and was available, you know, to anyone at any time with, you know, had questions or just needed a little encouragement in the process. Um, so I guess my uh, takeaway is that uh, the program is definitely helpful um, for universities where you already have an OER, OER initiative in process. Um, even if it's already launched, this is still a very useful thing. It's not just for beginners, but it's also good for beginners too. Thank you, Tim. That was super helpful. Uh, Tanya, can you uh, introduce yourself and speak to us a little bit about the program and what you got out of it? Hey, yeah, I'm uh, Tanya Farrell. I am at the University of Nebraska at Omaha, and um, I was part of the first cohort. It was an amazing experience. I echo a lot of the things Tim, Tim has already said, but um, kind of our local context was I was hired in 2018 to kind of get the program up and running. Um, we didn't have anything before that and we were really excited about starting it. And so in about the seven or eight months before I was part of the program, I felt like I'd really hit the ground running and gotten things started up. But 
I didn't really have that community or know where to go to find examples of what other people were doing. We weren't part of the OTN yet, um, and we were just sort of doing it all on our own. So that uh, community of peers, um, both the other people in the cohort and then, of course, the instructors, just seeing what other people were doing, um, that was an amazing opportunity for us. And then kind of that connectedness, you know, I was part of the in-person uh, cohort, but you know, I'm, I'm uh, an introvert, and so I don't always take advantage of sort of those connected opportunities at conferences and things like that. But I thought the way that um, you all set it up was really, it worked really well, and I got really into it, and I felt like I left knowing people really well, and so I'm sure that transfers really well to the, the Zoom experience that we're all in now. Um, I have no doubt that that is something that went well, and then um, action plan um, was just like, it was really cool to come out with just a really professional, um, great document kind of leading the way. And this is Penelope. I went on maternity leave a few months after the action plan was created. And so that was a really cool thing too, to be able to hand over to my supervisors and say, hey, this is where we've been. I know you all like know what we've been doing, but here's an, like a written out really concrete um, roadmap of what we've been doing and where we're going and just the little bite-sized pieces of what I expect to be done in the next few months and also looking forward a few years. So kind of that document for transitions and things like that, I think is a really, really cool thing to come out of it. Thank you so much, Tanya. Um, next, Nora Rackley, can you speak to us a little bit about uh, what you got out of the certificate and, and what it helped you do? Hi, everyone. Um, I have to say, well, third, <laughs> Tim and Tanya, because uh, the program has been um, very kind of instrumental in shaping what my career is now um, and how it's um, evolved. So since graduating from the program. Um, my title's been changed to reference an OER librarian. So it's given me the confidence to go out there and ask for a seat at the table when uh, faculty are selecting books. Um, ask for um, faculty to consider an OER text. So we've um, been able to launch a program that sort of got um, distracted or derailed, I would say, by um, COVID and everything that's happened. We also um, went from having a very supportive VP to a brand new VP of Academic Affairs. Um, I have in the last, I think, Two weeks ago, I sat down with him and talked to him about the program. He was very impressed with what we have done. Um, I can tell you that action plan is this really great tool. You know, it's this really glossy, beautiful project um, that presents something concrete to them. It's no longer this woo-woo little plan that the librarian cooked up. Right, it's this very concrete and very thought out plan that's based on the strategic goals of the college, not just woo woo willy nilly, right? So um, they take us seriously and faculty um, come to us. As a matter of fact, over the summer, um, a one of the faculty members who had been dead set against doing OER at all, in any shape, way, shape, or form, um, was teaching a technical writing class, and she, you know, needed a new textbook, but because the old textbook, who knows what, out of print, something, and um, she calls me and she says, "Well, I, I want a new textbook, and I thought I'd give you a try first before we go to shop at other textbook companies," and so. Knowing what I know from the program gave me the opportunity to share with them four or five different textbook options that they then went ahead and adopted one. So it's given me that knowledge and that confidence to say, look, I've got something that might help. Even if you don't use it, look at it. 
and that has helped us. Our plan's still in flux. We have joined um, an initiative through Florida International University called Affordability Counts, where um, faculty get badges for um, having affordable textbooks and or OER textbooks for their um, classes. And then we're also, the new vice president was talking to me about a grant initiative to uh, get money for folks to convert to OER or uh, create new textbook materials and things like that. So crossing fingers. <laughs> Thank you, Nora. I will say about the strategic plan, I spent uh, 18 years reporting to a senior vice president of academic affairs at my uh, prior position. And whenever I would come to her with a proposal, her question was, what are the details and does it connect to our strategic plan? Um, and so the fact that this so carefully and intelligently and thoughtfully um, provides that structure, I think, um, is very persuasive and compelling um, to administrators who are very busy. Um, and I will also say that I think the accessibility and affordability have never been more important than they are right now um, during the pandemic. Uh, and so I think this is a perfect opportunity uh, for people to take advantage of, of that and, and to highlight OER. Uh, and the curriculum and the mentors and the connectedness with your uh, fellow cohort members, I think provides you um, the opportunities to do so. So um, our final testimonial is from Philip Shackelford, who I believe is uh, currently in the certificate or is finishing up right now. Is that correct, Philip? Uh, yes, that's correct. Almost there. Almost there. Uh, well, thank you. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to share um, a little bit about uh, my experience and, and what I've what I've appreciated about the program. Um, again, my name is Philip Chakward. I'm the library director here at uh, South Arkansas Community College, um, and I, I, I feel like my, my experience is probably representative of a lot of us uh, that have been in the cohort. We've, you know, done a little bit of work in OER up to this point, and we had some things that we had. We had a task force. We had a, a few things going, um, but this really provides um, a, a more in-depth framework um, to to take that work and take it to the next level. So if I may, I'll, I'll just break down my comments into three, three different um, uh, things to think about. I think first and foremost, this is a learning experience. Um, even if you have been working with OER in the past, um, chances are you'll learn things that are either new to you or you'll go uh, in greater depth and greater and uh, uh, deeper layers of knowledge that you'll be able to build on for further for future work. Um, and secondly, I, I appreciate that this, this program really provides um, the framework for developing uh, your action plan. Um, I think it's obvious that the creators of the program knew that any product generated by the program needed to be practical and meaningful for the participants and their home institutions. Um, the action plan is just that. It's a document that is tailored to your institution and those needs. Um, and uh, I think that's a particular strength of the program. You've heard, you've heard all of us today talk about the action plan. And to me, I think that's one of the best things that really comes out of this experience. Um, and then finally, the, the program is blessed with uh, supportive faculty and coordinators. Uh, the, the folks here are just wonderful. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, if you have uh, any, anything you're wondering about, any, uh, you know, as you're developing your action plan or you're going through the courses, um, they're just very supportive. And I think, again, as you've heard already today, that's just one of the particular strengths of this program. Um, and uh, it's uh, they really their dedication makes it what it is. So thank you. Thank you, Philip. I've got a really touchy mouse here, so I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> oh, you're good. <laughs> um, so we've got info on our website. Um, applications are due November 6th. Um, and I think Craig, uh, our communication specialist, is going to uh, post it into the chat, so both the website link and the application link. Um, but I really just thank all of the participants today. Thank you, instructors. Uh, thank you, current and former participants, for sharing your uh, just the ways in which this uh, program has benefited you. So thank you for that. Um, are there any questions? And, and instructors and participants, please, it doesn't have to be me answering these, so I might look to you. 
Uh, we do have just one question at the moment. Um, if someone is a librarian, but their current position is in the Office of Open Education, working closely with the library and librarians, could they still participate? Did, I'm sorry, was the first part that this person was a librarian? Yes. Yes. If you're a librarian, regardless of where you're located in the college or university, please feel free to apply. Good question. Uh, I'll just add on to that. Um, I actually work in our instructional design unit, not our uh, library. Um, so this was actually a fun experience because I, I don't spend very much time with librarians. I, I spend most of my time with faculty and instructional designers. Um, so yeah, I totally say apply for sure. Thank you, Tim. That was a helpful perspective. I'll say also one of the original creators, um, Dave Rose, comes from instructional design as well. So we've, we've benefited from that perspective throughout. Yeah, it was really interesting as a member. He wasn't my cohort leader, Mandy was, but um, to hear his perspective on it as all of us librarians were in the room. Um, looks like we've got one more that just came in. I'm not a librarian, but I lead the OER support program for my consortium and work also, and also work closely with librarians and open education initiatives. Am I eligible? Right now, the program is just for librarians, and we've been, we've debated this back and forth. Um, if you'd like, you can go ahead and email me, um, and I'd be happy to discuss this uh, with the instructors and with our senior managing director. Um, but uh, right now, you know, I think we are going to keep it to librarians um, because it is so library focused. But just know that that's not the first time we've gotten that question. Um, and so, you know, what it makes me think is, do we need something like this that's a little bit more generalized? Um, and so, you know, we're, we're, we're throwing that around and thinking about that. So thank you for the question. And, it, and if you want to tell me a little bit more about your situation and email me, um, it's on the bottom there. Uh, feel free to do that. And, and I should say, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I saw in the comments, so is it about the MS, the, the library degree? And I'll say it's, I think it's less about the, oh, you, you're a quote, real librarian or something, and it's more about whether the action plan is useful for your context or not. So it's, it's not that we don't value that perspective or that that wouldn't be good. It's that we've built it to support a certain type of sort of set of activities, and we wouldn't want to waste anybody's time with activities that don't support the work you're trying to do. Thank you, Will. I can't unfortunately see the chat right now, um, but I think that's exactly right. It's about the context, not about being, you know, not about the degree. So thank you. Um, another question in the chat, how far ahead do participants get a calendar of monthly meeting dates after the initial eight week portion? Uh, so instructors, can somebody take this question? I'll say for my cohort, and I've been talking a lot, so I hope other people will chime in too. I'm getting tired of my own voice, but um, I always work with the cohort to find the right dates. We don't just sort of set dates and say, make it work. But I, it's, I've done a lot of doodle polls over the past few months. I agree with Will, same process. Great. Um, and we have one more question in the Q&A right now. Uh, does one need to be very familiar with one's institution to participate fully? I'm new to mine and from the action plan project, it sounds a little as though it may be significant to be pre pretty familiar. Um, so I'm going to take this and then instructors or participants, please uh, jump in. But what I'll say is I've seen a complete range of people from who are very experienced in OER um, and maybe experienced at their institution or I'm brand new to the institution. We've seen everything along that spectrum. Um, and I would say, no, you don't need to be fully acquainted with everything about your institution. This gives you um, an opportunity to explore and to get to, to know some people and to ask some questions. But, you know, we, we're real human beings who understand that there are real challenges. So when somebody says, ah, I just can't get into to ask my dean this particular question, you know, we might modify and adapt and go, okay, let's go in a different direction um, and make it a little bit more accessible for you. Um, so the answer is, if you're brand new at your institution, you can still uh, fully participate. Does anybody want to add anything to that? I, I, I want to that. echo. Go ahead, Philip. Sure. Okay, um, I was just going to jump in and say, actually, a positive side effect of this might be that you become more familiar 
uh, with your institution because as, as you're having these conversations and learning, again, about the strategic plan and other documents or other initiatives at your institution, uh, to plug those in to your, to your OER plan, I think that's a, that's a positive side effect that would come out of this. Yeah, I was going to echo now what Philip and what Will both said. Uh, it's, it's not about how familiar you are with the institution. It's about understanding what direction the institution wants you to take the, the OER program. And it, I believe it's actually a perfect position to be in because you are new and it gives you an opportunity just to go into people and say, so I'm new, tell me about this. Or I'm new, I think we should do this because it's been done elsewhere. So I think those are some of the great opportunities that you have being new or old. And if I could just jump on that too, just one more, like I was brand new and I found it very helpful because our library is very much like a, let's just hit the ground running and try things. And if it works great, if it doesn't, no big deal. And you know, the deans and maybe the directors are connecting things to the overall strategic plan, but the boots on the ground librarians aren't as much. And so that gave me an opportunity to really connect the things that I don't know that I would have thought out on my own. That's helpful, Tanya. Back when we used to actually go to campuses before the pandemic, I ran into um, a certificate alumnus who said, I had a reason to talk to my dean. Finally, my dean knows who I am. This was on a big, uh, a big university, but it provided this person um, an opportunity to speak meaningfully with a supervisor or his supervisor supervisor that he never would have met. Um, he never would have had an opportunity. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, any other questions or comments? Uh, we have nothing in the queue. So unless we have any last minute questions, go ahead and get those in now. We'll wait just a second in case there are. It looks like no. Okay, well, we would love to see you apply. Uh, as you've heard, this is a great program with great instructors. Um, and I just, I love uh, the dialogue that goes on and the connections that are made. So uh, we definitely welcome your application. And um, I think they are probably already pasted in the chat, so both our website, which has all the information and then a link to the actual application. Again, it's due November 6th. Um, and if you have questions beyond this webinar, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, and if I don't know the answer, I will connect with an instructor who undoubtedly will because librarians just know stuff, right? They do, they really do. So thank you so much for spending this time with us. Uh, take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.